Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today, we're going to start looking at, for this section anyway, we're going to look at a pitfall that I've run into and you might have seen um, in some code example. I don't know if people really pointed it out, but I kind of want to just show it to you. So this shouldn't be a very long video, but I'm still going to try and walk you through it. So um, notice um, this is not necessarily a concurrency pattern, and it's not really isn't the concern it's just pitfalls something you should be aware of um, I'm not saying that I've, we've covered all the concurrency patterns but I think we've covered the most popular ones and so I think you have enough to be able to learn other ones there's this book on concurrency pattern um, if I find a reference to it I'll definitely include it uh, towards the end of this chapter um, I should be able to find that but anyway I think um, again we don't cover everything in this course. Uh, we kind of, you know, just kind of introduce you to a number of topics and try to get you your bearing in Go programming. The idea is not to try and do everything. We'll never end, not to mention, I don't know everything. Okay, so with that said, um, let's look into this potential pitfall when you launch Go routine from closures. Remember, closures are these anonymous functions that would have reference or access to variables in their enclosing scope, right? So what could be the problem there? So let me try and illustrate it with an example. And so I did the whole song and dance that we usually do. And I start up the code, and this is a code from previous. I don't need um, this all the code, so I'm going to get rid of that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pretty much get rid of almost everything. Um, let's do that and do that. And so let's imagine that I do have a weight group and there I'm saying weight. And so what I want to do is I want to say for I get zero, I less than some n, I plus plus. And then in here, I'm going to learn some go routine and I'm going to say const n equals to, let's say five. Okay. And what I want to do is be able to inside this for loop, I'm going to use this for loop to run some Go routines. So I have to say Go Funct, and I'm going to create a Go routine here. And of course, it's a function call, right? So this is just an anonymous function call, and then I'm saying Go on that anonymous function call. So since this is a closure, this, this anonymous function is a closure, it has access to this variable i, right? So what I want to do, I want to say time that sleep. And I'm going to sleep for a random amount of time. So let's say um, that's going to be um, time that duration. We know to do that. And it's ran that int n. And I'm going to sleep for, I don't know what, uh, let's do 3,000 uh, milliseconds. Um, sure. Times time that milliseconds. OK. Um, maybe let's knock it back to two. So we don't sit around too long waiting. All right. So I'm going to sleep for maximum of two seconds. Okay. All right. Seems fair enough. Um, try and, okay. So I can get some more room by doing that. Then after I sleep for a little bit, so once this Go routine is launched, the first thing you do is it sleep because it's lazy. And then it's going to do FMT, that print line. And it's going to print out, I got I equals, let's say, um, come on, simple, I, right? Now, if you look at this code and you just have to reason it, um, you think, okay, when I launch the Go routine, um, so, i is equal to zero, it comes around, it's launch this go routine. This go routine is go to go to sleep, but since this is a closure and it has access to this variable i, well, what do you think this go routine that's launched when i is equal to zero should print out? And then when you get to the end, the very last go routine, when i is equals to you know four, because once i is equals to five, we know we're not going to go through this loop anyway, right? Because there's only when i is less than n. So the last one is going to be when i is equals to 4. And so what should the value of i be? Well, what is that go routine going to print out? Essentially, the question I'm asking is, what value should I expect from my five go routines? And um, 
of course, we want to um, say that our, before we launch a go routine, we want to say weight group that add. Oh, where's my weight group? Uh, okay, I didn't create a weight group. Right. Var weight group that weight group is sync at weight group. Okay, okay, so weight group that add one, and then here after I finish, I want to do weight group that done. Okay, so all right, fine. All right, so where's my why is my code looking like this? Okay, uh, oh, there's my weight group at the bottom there. So I want to do weight group that weight. All right, so that should be it, right? So this is my code. All the other stuff above is import statement. So this is what my code look like. All right, so let's go run this. So what we think is gonna happen is we're gonna launch five go routine, right? Then this for loop is just call in weight group add, launch a go routine, go back around, and it's gonna do this really fast. Um, and the go routine is gonna go bubble off to the side and at some point get scheduled to run, and then this for loop is going to finish and the main go the go routine running my main is going to just be blocked here waiting for those guys to complete right so let's see what happens so go run main and look at that even though they all took their jolly old time and finish whenever they all printed out five right now hopefully uh if you expected to see zero one through three four um that's fine because that's what some people might expect because you, you're thinking, well, when I launch the grow routine, it probably had access to this variable thing. And you might think, well, mm, Varel, you know what? I think you cheated because you know what? By the time the go routine is ready to launch, um, if I is already reached five. And so of course they're gonna print out the current value of I, right? So maybe you're thinking, well, if I put it up here and the go routine, the first thing it does is actually print out the value high and then sleep for a little bit before it completes. Then, hey, this is the first thing it does when it starts up. I might see my value. And it's possible. It all depends on when those um, go routines are scheduled. And as you can see, that's exactly what I'm saying. So one of them was scheduled early enough that it got to print out when I was four, but the other four got um, thing. And then look at the order. So this guy was obviously somehow got reference to that value when it was I when it was four, but yet its output didn't appear here. So as you could see, the pitfall here is kind of relying on the shared value inside your go routine uh, when you do a closure could be problematic. One way, if you really want this go routine to print out, if I is being used as an ID, like you want to say I am, my ID is, for example, you want this to be used as an ID, right? My ID is, I and it really doesn't matter if you slip step first or whatever you want to make sure you have the right ID let's call this X or ID right and so one way is to just pass that value I in don't depend on um, you know ID is some int and I'm gonna pass in the value of ID and so now when the go routine is launched, when this go statement is called, it needs to evaluate what the current value of I is and pass that into the go routine. And so that current value of I, which is gonna be zero the first time, is gonna get copied to ID. And then this go routine is gonna have a local variable ID with a value zero. And the next one is gonna have one and so on. And so now we don't have any weird thing. It's not gonna happen. And so you run this, you're going to see that the go routines um, print out with their proper ID. You don't have any problem. The other thing you might have seen people work around this issue is by doing something like this. And I don't particularly like that way, but I'll show it to you and it sort of works. And so they would say, for example, I'll create a variable ID. Remember, this is just a shortcut for saying var ID is equals to blah, 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 right? So I'll create a variable ID and assign it to I. And you might think, well, mm -hmm, strange. You're taking I, so the first time we come around, I is zero, create this variable ID, I'm gonna stick it in there, and then I reference ID here. So isn't this the same problem that we had before when our closures that we launch them have the same thing? 
Well, not exactly. And let's run this and see. And you see, it works. That's because when we come around here the first time, this is one variable and this closure have access to that variable. When we go around, we're creating another variable. And so the second closure has access to that second variable, yet another variable, right? And so this also works, like I said, the, the, the other way with the colon is just a shortcut. So you keep creating a new ID essentially. And so each closure is having access to a different ID, okay? And so that's why it works. Um, this works and you might see this um, as a way in which people get around this problem. I like the more explicit, you know, ID, this go routine takes some, um, I prefer this myself because this makes it very clear what is it that you're trying to do and you don't have to really exert any mental powers or brain time to think about to process it. This is more explicit. So you have two ways around it. I wanted to show you um, just because this idea of launching Go Routine from a for loop and using anonymous function or closures is something that you are going to be doing because there's no need, sometimes for a simple Go Routine to do something, there's no need for you to actually go create a function. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice if you had a function, let's call it function foo. Um, you wouldn't have this problem, right? If I move it, move this, and then I take this away. If I have a function here, I wouldn't have this problem because I would need, even if I had i, if I was trying to use i here, I would still need to pass it in. And so I would have i is int, and I would still need to, when I launch my function, my foo functions over here, I would still have to pass in, you know, that I. And of course, I would not have any problem. It would work just as I expect. Of course, no, the weight, uh, weight group is not accessible and I, get, I would have to pass that in. And based on what we learned yesterday, we know by now that your weight group should be a pointer because we saw the problem with that. Um, if you don't use a pointer, so of course, um, I'll be doing that. And so now this is still gonna work, okay? But just in case you don't need to, you don't wanna pull out a function and I'm not advocating for always creating functions. It's just something simpler to, you know, keep things, uh, not have to write an explicit function to just use the function literal, uh, which is the closure as we know it, right? So definitely use closures, but be cognizant of the fact that they're gonna enclose variables that, um, you know, close over variables that since they're all accessing it, you have to be careful of who's changing it and so on. All right, so that's it. I hope you kind of get the potential pitfall. If you haven't run into it, then fine, great. But as you start writing Go program, just be aware of it. And if you ever see that problem, you kind of hopefully would jog your memory and go, wait a second. I've been warned about this and you can come back and kind of um, know where to look to see one or two potential ways of solving that issue. So take care. Thanks for your time. Same thing as before. I do appreciate you taking your time to come watch the videos. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you have, thank you very much and please spread the word. Okay, take care. Bye.